The mind of a mathematician can be a puzzling one, at least to those who don't understand it. It was this misunderstanding that had one of math's biggest contributors, Paul Erdős, trailed by the FBI for nearly four decades. Unlike other scientists who need lab equipment and offices to do their work, some mathematicians are able to work with only pen, paper, and their minds. Paul Erdős took this to the extreme. The Hungarian-born mathematician was a professional nomad who relied on the courtesy of friends all around the world to host him while he attended conferences and took temporary guest lecturer positions. He dedicated himself solely to mathematics. He had no partner or children, no home, no hobbies, and lived out of a suitcase. His only prized possessions were his mathematical notebooks, and he always carried one around with him. Erdős left all of his other papers in a closet in the office of mathematician Ronald Graham, who was known for coming up with a very large number named Graham's number. Graham looked after Erdős later in his life, including handling Erdős's money, letters, and visa troubles. Erdős constantly travelled and would just show up on the doorstep of a fellow mathematician and collaborate with them for a few days until he was bored or the host had had enough of him, and then he'd move on to another visit. He lived by the motto of another roof, another proof. In one account of Erdős, mathematician William Trotter recalls his house guest standing at his bed at 4am to ask if his brain is open and ready to think about math. Erdős was said to work on mathematics for 19 hours a day, which I struggle to see as possible, but this biography about him claims he fortified himself with Ritalin, strong espresso, caffeine tablets, and it later mentions amphetamines. There's no shortage of stories about Erdős's peculiarities. Here is an account from Graham about what it was like to host Erdős. Do you have any grapefruit? Erdős asked. I don't know, Graham replied. Did you look? I don't know where to look. How about the refrigerator? Where in the refrigerator? Well, just look. Erdish found a grapefruit. He looked at it and got a butter knife. It can't be by chance, Graham explained, that he so often used the dull side of the knife, trying to force his way through. It'll be squirting like mad all over himself and the kitchen. I'd say, Paul, don't you think you should use a sharper knife? He'd say, it doesn't matter as the juice shoots across the room. At that point, I give up and cut it for him. Another host described finding a trail of blood-like red liquid covering their kitchen floor before discovering that Erdős had opened a carton of tomato juice in the fridge by stabbing a hole in its side. The only dish that Erdős could cook was cereal, and he said that he could probably boil an egg, but had never tried. Despite his unusual behaviour, or maybe because of it, Erdős was one of the most prolific mathematicians ever, challenged only by the likes of Euler. In particular, Erdős thought a lot about questions in number theory, set theory, combinatorics, and was especially fascinated by prime numbers. It was considered a great honour to work with Erdős, and mathematicians still track how many degrees of separation they are away from collaborating with him. An Erdős number of one is a direct co-author, and an Erdős number of two is a person who worked with someone who has an Erdős number of one, and so on. Here's the current list of people with an Erdős number of three or less. With 485 co-authors, Erdős collaborated with more people than any other mathematician in history. One mathematician who has an Erdős number of one is Terence Tao, who first met Erdős at the age of 10 in 1985. Erdős published roughly 1,500 papers across all his collaborations. Yet throughout a large portion of this time, Erdős had a secret co-author as well, the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation. Starting in 1950 and ending in 1990, the FBI collected information and kept records on Erdős as he traversed the globe for the sake of mathematics, seemingly without him ever knowing. Over the years Erdős was watched, the FBI amassed more than 200 pages of secret documents that were released to the public in 2014 at the request of journalist Cody Winchester, after almost a year of waiting. The names of informants and even special agents who tracked Erdős's whereabouts are redacted, but the report paints a picture of a suspected Hungarian spy who travelled the globe to carry intelligence information for the communist cause. 
For the FBI, the reality of Erdish's travels may have been even more incomprehensible. The FBI's suspicions about Erdős all started in 1950, after his Hungarian passport was renewed following 10 years in the United States. Erdős had returned home to Hungary in 1948 and stayed for two years before continuing his global travels. Today, renewing your passport is a commonplace activity, but during the Cold War it was very uncommon for non-diplomatic Hungarian citizens to have valid passports. For the FBI, this was a red flag. On page 6 of Erdős's FBI files, an informant claims that the mathematician must have very influential connections in Budapest in order to possess this passport. With his newly minted passport, it appears that Erdős then returned to the United States. The first pages of Erdős's FBI report then depict a bit of a wild goose chase as special agents and informants try to determine exactly where Erdős really is. In this Where is Waldo search, the FBI first looked for Erdős at the University of Kansas and then a couple of universities in Scotland before tracking him down at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland in 1951. Erdős didn't have a permanent job, just like he didn't have a house, he was always a transient visitor to his friends' universities, which made him hard to find. During this chase, the FBI also uncovered another potentially incriminating discovery from time Erdős spent at the University of California, Los Angeles in the summer of 1950. Erdős's visit to UCLA came during a period of time in the United States which sought to repress communist ideas in culture and particularly in academia. During this time, University of California schools asked faculty to sign a loyalty oath which looked like this. In a nutshell, the oath asked academics to swear to uphold the US and California constitutions, to not overthrow the government, and to affirm that they weren't communists. Erdős refused to sign it. Despite these marks on his record, first-hand accounts from informants about Erdős's personality do not depict a nefarious spy. Instead, he was described on page 22 of the FBI files as one of the top mathematicians in the world, purely a mathematician with a typical atmospheric mind as related to factual things, the genius type who lives within his own mental scope and that it is difficult to know him personally. Others described him as lazy, preoccupied, and seemingly scholarly, and claimed his refusal to sign UCLA's loyalty pledge was out of support for academic freedom and not disloyalty. But not everyone seemed so sure about Erdős's affiliations. One informant claimed he was a communist at heart, and even Erdős himself had made potentially incriminating remarks about communism, including comparing the US to the Soviet Iron Curtain. Luckily, this didn't seem to be enough for the FBI to fully suspect him of espionage. It also helped that a personal account of Erdős in his FBI file said that his commitment to open science would have made him a poor spy anyway, because he would have spilled the beans immediately. He would probably divulge the results of this research to a foreign power in the misguided belief that his action was serving the best interest of humanity as a whole. During this whole investigation, Erdős continued to publish prolifically on topics including primes, Brownian motion, and open problems in set theory. Erdős still ran into problems with the US government even when he was in Europe. His first attempt in 1951 to receive a renewed travel visa to accept the coal prize in mathematics was never approved or even responded to, it seems, despite multiple letters from Erdős and even a strongly worded letter published in the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. Erdős applied again for a visa to travel to the US in 1954, and this time was outright rejected by US immigration, apparently without the FBI's knowledge. In this case, the refusal came after word reached the US that Erdős had once again renewed his Hungarian passport, as well as exchanged so-called tokens of friendliness with the Hungarian communist government, including membership and awards from the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in the later part of the 1950s. As the report would go on to find, this membership in the Hungarian Academy of Sciences came with a stipend that was paid out to Erdős's elderly mother in Hungary. 
While exiled from the United States, Erdős continued his work and published papers on subjects including perfect numbers, toplets matrices, and primes. It wasn't until 1959 that Erdős made his triumphant return to the US after a US senator made a request on his behalf to US naturalization and immigration. In reality, this request actually originated from the director of the Mathematics Center at the University of Minnesota, mathematician Paul Rosenblum. According to Rosenblum, Erdős was a strong and informed opponent of communism and had done much to steer young people clear of communist front activities. Despite their decades-long efforts, the FBI could never find evidence that Erdish was up to anything in his travels other than relentlessly pursuing mathematics. As for his Hungarian passport, the reports conclude that this perk was likely awarded to Erdish as part of scientific propaganda, saying his stature in the mathematics field could easily induce the Hungarian government to keep a string on him in the hope he would eventually settle in Hungary. Also, by virtue of his continuing ability to travel, he serves as a walking propaganda advertisement for Hungarian academic freedom. As a redacted informant put it, Erdős is very reliable in every respect, and an individual who has great affection for the United States. That said, the FBI would continue to keep tabs on Erdős's movement in the US for several decades to come. In 1966, Erdős visited IBM with colleagues and was asked by the FBI to have no access to computer hardware. While his case was formally closed in 1967, records show that the FBI still followed Erdős to give lectures in Colorado as late as 1976. The final file logged by the FBI on Erdős is dated November 16, 1990, only six years before his death. It seems that the FBI came to accept a fact that Erdős's many friends and collaborators had known all along, which is that he had no interest in any matter other than mathematics. In 1935 in Cambridge, he told me, we mathematicians in all a bisschen machine, which means we mathematicians are all a little bit crazy. Erdős has been called many things, such as the most eccentric mathematician in the world, or the oddball's oddball, or even the man who loved only numbers. But one title that didn't fit was Spy. If you enjoyed this video and want to see me make more, then please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. For silver patrons, I am mailing out a pack of stickers, plus these ribbons of support. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and thank you for watching. A special shout out to today's Patreon Cat of the Day, Gook.